Networking is about building a network. It's not about going out there and selling. I see a lot of people who go to networking events, they rock up with their business cards and they just want to sell. Wake Up To Business is your Get The Business Day Started program, coming from the country's top business shows, expos and networking events. Join us as we discuss today's business news, strategy and gain some tips from our panellists that might help you in your business today. So good morning to you. If you find that networking never seems to quite produce the results you want, we might have some answers for you in the next few minutes. If you've had all kinds of problems with your phone systems, such as I've had, then hopefully we can sort that out for you too. And also, perhaps we can find a way for you to connect with local people. We've got a man here who knows all about how to reach people in their homes through their letterboxes as well. I'm delighted to say that we are coming today from Business Biscotti in Kingston of Old Town, from Las wow. Iguanas. And as you can tell, it is very busy behind us. If you're listening on iTunes at the moment, then the sound you can hear is everyone mingling away doing business behind us. It's a, a very lively event. I've been coming along to Kingston Biscotti for a, a few months now, and there's always a lot of different people here, including these lovely people. And I'm delighted to say we've actually got the lady who runs the UK organization of Business Biscotti, Sue. Who we'll is set it us. up. Uh, sorry, <laughs> set it up. Oh, you running it as well, aren't you? Yeah. Doing all that too. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, very business, a, a bit of busy and lively event taking place here today. So let's start off first of all with a few rapid fire questions starting off. Let's start off with Sue. Sue Reeves, you set up UK Business Biscotti. You've what, gained something like another 10,000 members in the past six months alone. So you're obviously doing something right. Just tell us a bit about Business Biscotti first. Okay. Business Biscotti was set up originally to help small to medium sized enterprises network with each other completely free of charge. What we recognised was that SMEs didn't want to pay huge subscription fees and membership and then pay for breakfast or lunch on yeah, top. Because there's a lot of different problems out there. There's loads, yeah. absolutely loads. But there's nothing like Business for Scotty because it is absolutely free. Everybody in the Business for Scotty organisation does it because they want to help and enable SMEs to network. Right. So the ambassadors give their time free of charge, the venues give their space free of charge, uh, people just pay for their, their tea or coffee. Um, and we at head office, we resource it all free of charge as well. We don't take any money out of business. And obviously we're all benefiting from it. Well, we're all visiting here to the event today, aren't we? along with everyone else behind it. Okay. Let's talk about networking. I went to an event the other day where a girl said to me, networking never works. And yet, I've spoken to enough people who are making their entire business from networking. Let's try and get some practical advice here. What is the main thing that they're doing wrong when they say networking doesn't work? Okay, networking is about building a network. It's not about going out there and selling. I see a lot of people who go to networking events, they rock up with their business cards and they just want to sell. Yeah. Or they just want to take cards from people yeah. without giving anything back. The philosophy of Business for Scotty is about giving back first. People need to understand that they need to help someone first. Yeah. Because if they do, they'll feel that they are obligated or indebted to that person. And that means giving advice? Or? Advice, time, help, even just saying let's go and meet for a cup of coffee so I can get to know you better. Building a network is about knowing people so that when you're out there networking further, you can say, I met somebody who I know, trust and is a professional has integrity. I can refer them to you. For example, I went to the hairdressers uh, last week and the lady at the hairdresser said to me, I'm looking to have all my windows done. Can you recommend a window supplier who's trustworthy and clean? So I had two or three in the local biscotti that yes. I've recommended to her. Uh, two of them are quoted and one of them has got the job. And that's because you've developed a personal relationship. But we all know that feeling where we have gone to networking events and we found ourselves pitching at someone, they've pitched back to us, we've glazed over, we don't know what they said, and we've looked around thinking who do we talk to next. Yeah. And it's those moments that 
you, you get to a point where you go, well, what, how do I break through that cycle? What, what have I got to do differently when I get into that state? Because there's a feeling we've got to do it fast, isn't it? One of the tips that I can give to people is that over the years, I've built five or six businesses purely on networking. What I do when I go to a networking event, I try and work the room. Yeah. So I try and see as many people as I can and take their business cards from them. I have a strategy where I write on the back of the business card where it was, what the date was, and what I have agreed to do for them. And usually it's to put them in touch with somebody or to provide them with a link to something or to just pass something on and I always do it if I say to somebody that's what I'm going to do yeah. I do and then remember it Okay, so there's a great first tip. We'll definitely get some off here a little bit later on. Obviously, this is the kind of advice you get if you come along to events like this. Let's move straight on though. Richard, you've got quite a technical thing, and I don't fully understand all the ins and outs of it, but that's the whole point. I have all kinds of problems with my phone system. Okay, I've been using BT, Virgin, all kinds of people. The phone cuts out, I've had all kinds of problems on the past. You're providing a, a, a business phone. Well, explain it to me. I still don't quite get it. But from what you said to me, you sort out these problems. Right. So what we provide is a cloud-based telephony system that we, in fact, develop um, in-house ourselves. What's a cloud-based telephone system? So traditionally, businesses would buy an on-site um, telephone system, um, a piece of hardware that would sit somewhere in your office, and all your phones in your office would connect back to that piece of the hardware sitting there. Um, that's traditional telephone system. We took basically develop a software, a cloud-based telephone system right. that sits on the internet, uh, provide you with phones and then connect over the internet back to that system. So you're basically providing a... In fact, <laughs> I can tell you this is an example of networking. I don't know whether you can see behind this at the moment. Well, he probably walked around. The local MP has just turned up. Uh, Ed Davey has just turned up to this. Event. Sorry, it's always someone going to interrupt you, isn't there, Richard? Oh, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> but your system works. In fact, Sue, I know you're probably going to have to go and have a quick word yeah, with Ed, like aren't you? So you're going to come back in a moment okay, once you've had a chance. So, Richard, yeah. look. So you've got a cloud-based phone system, but how does that help me when, or, or John, when he's sitting in his office and he's got a problem with his phone? He's got a phone, so because it sits in the cloud, we can access this, we can access it remotely um, and do any and um, uh, do any work or any any uh, help you need with it. We can do it remotely. We don't need to uh, come down to your office to fix the problem. But you've got, if, if for example, I've got a problem with, let's say, BT, I call up their call center and hopefully they fix it the same way. So what makes it different with this? Uh, they don't offer this kind of solution. In what sense? In what sense they will try to sell you these traditional telephone systems that sit in your office. Yeah. If you have a problem, yeah. they um, uh, will send out an engineer, uh, will take obviously a charge for that, for sending the engineer out, and um, it can't happen instantly. You always have to... Right, so you can solve it on the spot. We so can solve it instantly, because yeah. there's no hardware that needs to be maintained. It all sits on our server. We just lock in, fix the problem, and it's done. Got yeah. John, let's move on to you. Reaching local people. Now you've got this magazine which I, I just grabbed. I'm not sure how well you can actually see that on the camera at the moment, but this is only local. You've been doing this for a while, yeah? Yeah, just over two and a half years. Yeah. Right. And what, what got you doing it? Because there are a few sort of local papers, local magazines and things like that. What was it you were trying to achieve? Well, I, I was living in Auckland at the time. I was seeing a girl in Kingston and I was travelling consistently between Auckland and Kingston. Um, and every time I went home in Orpington, there was these two magazines that were pretty much the similar sort of style as to what I offered. Um, and there was nothing coming through the door in Kingston. And I just heard the newspaper, the local newspaper, that the informer had gone down. And I just thought that there was a massive hole in the market. Uh, other, there are other newspapers in the area, but they weren't being delivered to everybody. Yeah. Um, so I went out and did some research and found that there was a demand for something within the local community. But I, I wanted to go that step further, not just offer something that is just full of advertising. I wanted yeah. to have some content, a reason to pick up the magazine. And um, so, you know, I looked at what was around. There wasn't anything in this format. I looked at the demographics and I, and I decided that there was a market there and I could help. 
and contribute something back into the community. Right. So, I mean, the first, I suppose, 10 pages is dedicated to the local community. We've helped out over 20 different types of charities. I'm heavily involved with Love Kingston, which is a uh, local charity that's quite prominent in the market. Um, and so, um, we've just basically taken it from strength to strength over the last, sorry, two and a half years. Um, and it's structured in a way that you would pick it up and read it because a lot of the other magazines out there, they just seem to be random articles um, with random advertising. Yeah. You get a dog room and next to So you've actually gone for something really locally focused. It's, it's definitely locally How focused. How have you done it though? Because as I say, there is competition out there already. Yeah. You say you identified a demographic, a particular target market. Yeah. How did you go about doing that? Well, I went to the library and I picked up the census. Um, I worked out that if there was two magazines in Orpington, um, then there must be a demand for what they're doing. So I checked out the demographics in Orpington, worked out how many people are self-employed, worked out how many homes there are, worked out the demographic of the homes, and I found that it was very similar to Orpington, except um, the houses were a lot closer together in Kingston, so it made this distribution a little bit easier. <laughs> You have so, to walk up long driveways exactly, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, it, was, it was quite, um, for me it was quite a no-brainer. I mean, it just seemed yeah. a sensible thing to do. But so what is your model though? You, you found the right demographic, you found people living in that area, so then you're just simply delivering to them. But also you've got to get advertising, to, uh, advertisers come on board to reach those people. Yeah. So you've got the distribution side and the printing side which is relatively straightforward so I suppose the majority of your time is about getting the advertising which is the hardest part yeah, yeah absolutely the hardest part but how do you do that again when you've got a market where there's other people well to be honest with you it's not easy I yeah. set, when I very first set the magazine up I was literally with my laptop on my knees wondering if the next phone call I make is going to be the phone that ends the contract because I've run out of money yeah. um, so it was a lot of hardcore tele -call, cold calling tele sales um, visiting local businesses face to face but coming bringing things back nicely round to Sue, networking has helped my business enormously, yeah. not just in terms of getting business, but building contacts. And I have a, a very strong Just Call John line that I use with everybody. Yeah. If there is any problem, you can pick the phone up to me. Because not only am I in contact with local businesses, yeah. I also network. And I have a database and a list of people that I can call upon if I need to, or if somebody's struggling, or just starting out in the business. It's, it's, I make it my mission to try and help in every possible yeah, way. Yeah, so as Sue was saying earlier, it's, it's about developing that connection. Absolutely. Isn't it? Because, uh, you know, as I was saying to Sue, I'm sure we've done that, where we've been to networking events and we do just glaze over. We, yeah. We've all done it, haven't we? It's yeah. the best will in the world. And we just think to ourselves, well, who do we move on to next? You see someone over there and you, you know you've got an hour or something like that out there. And, and it's just, how do you... How do you do that when you get stuck in that rut? It's, yeah, it's yeah. breaking through that and finding a connection as well. And the, the trick is, is you just if you if you are finding yourself glazing over, then that means that you're being, in my mind, you're being rude to the person standing in front of you. Yeah. So you've got to kick yourself up the you, arse. You can't help it sometimes. No, 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 no. no you're you're just, just get into that. Yes, right. But you've got to kick yourself up the arse. And yeah. Then, but when you do get yourself in a situation, you can end the conversation if you find that person boring by saying, "What sort of person are you looking for? Yeah. How can I help you?" If you say those two questions. You'll find that you're, you're, you're engaging yourself with these people rather than just listening to what they've got to say. Yeah. So engagement is, is, is vital. Yeah. Um, coming in a snatch of cards doesn't help, but as Sue said, take a card, write on the back of it, yeah. what are you going to do for that person, and yeah. follow up is the key thing. Yeah. How important networking been for you? Because with your system being in the cloud, uh, essentially you've got a global marketplace. Um, you came along to this event today. What, why was it from your business point of view you came along today? So, well, we, we don't we don't operate globally yet. Although we just opened our our first international office in in Ireland. Um, no, we pretty much you know focus on the UK market, um, and and most of our customers will be in London um, and um, sort of in in the, in the local areas um, around. Uh, uh, what so, so is it trying to find somewhere where the business is? It's a bit like you you were talking about getting the demographics for the area so you could target what you were doing. Is it about coming along to a networking event where you know you're going to get the sort of people who are going to be interested in your service? So, you know, we, we highly focus on, on SMEs with our solution. We're not looking yeah. at, at the corporate market, at the, at the uh, uh, large end of the market. And um, all the networking that I do is where I get in touch with the SMEs, in fact. And that's where it's helping. And um, I've learned a lot about how to network properly, how to do it by, uh, you know, speaking to people like John, uh, who's been doing it for, for many, many years. Yes.